Hello everyone. Today we are continuing with our practical lessons and we'll be discussing qualitative test for bile salt and bile pigments in urine. All right. So right away we'll start first with qualitative test for bile salts. Now the name for qualitative test of bile salt is known as Hayes sulfur test. In many textbook it will be also known as Hayes test. Right now this is the simplest test of abnormal constituents of urine okay it is very 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 simple to perform to observe to memorize the principle everything is the easiest right uh, so let's look at the principle the principle is based on the fact that bile salt lowers the surface tension right so this is the basic principle presence of bile salt will lower the uh, surface uh, tension so let's look at the procedure right uh, in procedure what we need to do is we need to uh, take two test tubes right in the first tube we should label it as s that stands for sample and the second test tube we should label as c that stands for control right so in the sample test tube what we should do we should take 5 milliliter of urine right and on top of that we need to sprinkle a very small amount of sulfur powder just like that with the help of a spatula similarly in the control tube just like that we need to take same volume that is 5 milliliter of distilled water and on top of that we need to sprinkle with a spatula very small pinch of sulfur powder and that's it this is the procedure after that you don't shake the tube you make sure those two tubes stands absolutely still and if bile salts are present in your sample the observation will be sulfur powder will sink to the bottom in sample tube however it will continue to float on the surface in case of the control tube right and the inference is bile salts are present in the sample this is how it will look like in case of the control tube the sulfur powder will float on the surface and in case of the sample tube if the test is positive sulfur powder will simply sink to the bottom now you should give sulfur powder as minimum as possible right because if you pour in huge amount of sulfur powder the mere weight will push through the surface tension and it will it may settle in the control tube so always add a very small amount of sulfur powder now the alternative test to this is named as patent coffers test examiner may ask you name some other test by which you can test bile salts Alright, so this is your test for bile salts. We will be discussing the probable questions in the in next few moments. Let us first discuss the qualitative test for bile pigments. Now, if you are listening to some noise, there is a construction work going on around where I am recording this video. So, don't mind. Focus on what I am saying. So, Fuchet's test. Fuchet's test is a bit complicated, right? And the test for bile salt, if it's the easiest, Fuchet's test uh, procedure wise it is the toughest and it is the most time taking right so let's look at the principle what happens in case of Fuchet's test barium chloride combines with sulfate radical and precipitates barium sulfate right which combines with bile pigment so in the first step of the reaction barium chloride will uh, combine with sulfate to form BASO4 and that BASO4 will bind with the bile pigment that is present in the urine. Thereafter, then ferric chloride in Fuchet's reagent oxidizes bilirubin in presence of trichloroacetic acid to green viliburdine. Everything in the second sentence is actually present in Fuchet's reagent. So, in urine sample, we got bile pigment, we add magnesium sulfate and barium chloride separately so everything that is mentioned in the principle will be added separately in the reaction right so let us look at the procedure which is very 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 time taking and might appear cumbersome to you all see uh, first what we need to do in case of Fuchet's test 5 ml of urine is taken in a test tube right and to that equal volume of 10 percent barium chloride solution is added so after that the solution is mixed so you now have 10 ml of a solution of urine and barium chloride to that we add a pinch of magnesium sulfate and mix the whole thing again now here's a caveat 
in many institutes magnesium sulfate is often pre mixed with urine samples right to prevent this extra step so often uh, depending on what institute you are uh, studying there will not be magnesium sulfate that will be provided separately so how will you understand the moment you add barium chloride to urine if you get a thick white precipitate it means sulfate is already present in the urine sample right so needless to say urine barium chloride magnesium sulfate so this is the first step we shake it and keep the solution for 5 minutes right after 5 minutes we need to um, prepare a cone of filter paper in a funnel we make a cone of filter paper and we filter this whole solution so the next step after 5 minutes it is filtered then after it also takes some time to slowly get filtrated after the drip filter drip is over after all the sediment has collected on the filter paper the filter paper is unfolded and dried so this is step number 2 and this drying again needs some time so we need to mix it for 5 mix it keep it for 5 minutes then filter filtration takes some time and then it is dried in drying takes a lot of time next we add when the filter paper has dried we need to add few drops of fuchet's reagent fuchet's reagent is commercially available all right you don't need to prepare fuchet's reagent but few examiner may ask you what is present in the fuchet's reagent or how it is prepared we have already uh, we are providing this so fuchet's reagent is actually prepared by adding 10 ml of 10% ferric chloride to 100 ml of 25% tca that is trichloroacetic acid this line is specifically for academic purpose even if you don't mention this in the procedure you are absolutely fine but jo know this tca and ferric chloride these are present in fuchet's reagent so what will be the observation if bile pigments are present in the sample a greenish blue bluish green green blue all these combinations can be obtained remember you will get only one so please write only one don't write this either green slash blue in your practical notebook right you will get only one and you should write that only so this is a fuchet's test it takes a lot of time therefore we always say no matter what because in exam you need to do all the tests and then find the abnormal constituents one by one so always start with fuchet's test first start with fuchet's test mix the urine barium chloride and magnesium sulfate then leave it for mixing after i mean leave it for 5 minutes by then you perform other test that requires heat for example benedict and heat coagulation test thereafter you filter it and then you utilize the rest of the time in drying the filtered paper by that time you can perform other tests so remember always start with fuchet's test because it takes a lot of time in the meantime do other tests so what is the how does it look like you can see a pista green or bluish green color actually appears on the filter paper on the dried filter paper after you add fuchet's reagent now this color may also vary uh, depending on the amount of bile pigment that is present but depending on how your institute prepares the fuchet's reagent you will get used to the color that finally comes and once you do this hands on you won't forget ever so the alternative test for fuchet's test to test bile pigments is known as melin's test g is silent okay it is not g melin right it is melin's test so test for bile salt haze sulfur test test for bile pigments fuchet's test so let's now discuss the most important part that is probable questions the first question if you get either of these bile salt and bile pigment positive will be the principle of these tests because as a medical student you should know how these work actually mixing doesn't give you an extra credit anybody can do that so first question will be the principle next name some bile salt bile salts are sodium tocolate sodium glycocolate in that context examiner will also ask you name bile acids that is tocolic acid glycocolic acid examiner can also ask you name the primary bile acids secondary bile acid uh, tocolic acid glycocolic acids kino deoxycolic acid lithocolic acid so you need to read them okay what are primary and secondary bile acids they are also part of your physiology curriculum so that common topic will help you in both ways next examiner will ask you why what is the function of bile salt then the answer is emulsification of fat they help in digestion of fatty food right primary preliminary digestion 
next examiner will ask you why do we need control tube at all we could have just said that when sulfur powder is going down it means test is positive yes to large extent it means however in exam it may happen that you are doing this test then you are being called for your viva and then you come back so hours may pass right and if a lot of time passes some amount of sulfur powder may settle down due to gravity because with time the weight can bypass the surface tension right so if you take only a single tube it might be confusing whether after a lot of time whether the sulfur powder that has gone down is due to lowering of surface tension or it is due to the any other factors so unless you compare that with control tube you can't draw any conclusive evidence suppose even in control tube a small amount of sulfur powder has gone down but in the uh, sample tube a lot of sulfur powder has gone down it clearly proves that in the control tube it's due to uh, many other factors but since a lot of sulfur powder has gone down in the sample tube it surely means surface tension is low so that way you should always draw a conclusion when comp i mean in uh, case of his sulfur test by comparing it with control tube and remember when showing it to the examiner you must always show two tubes together and make it a point that in case of both the tubes since you are taking 5 ml of urine sample and distilled water the level of fluid should be absolutely same if in one you take a lot of water and in the one you take a less urine it will show that you are not doing it rightly control and sample should identically be identical looking right only the reagent is different in control it is distilled water and in sample it is the urine sample so this you need to be careful next comes Fuchet's test Fuchet's test also principle will be asked by about bile pigments you can be asked bilirubin and bilirubin then in case of Fuchet's test examiner will directly go to jaundice types of jaundice uh, direct bilirubin indirect bilirubin how do you test them you test uh, how can you differentiate between different types of hyperbilirubinemia by Vandenberg test so uh, everything uh, that you read in liver function test we will be making separate video on different types of jaundice may be asked in Fuchet's test next one important thing that will be asked name the clinical condition or the disease where you can get bile salts and bile pigments in urine the answer to that will be obstructive jaundice mind it obstructive jaundice is a condition when you get both bile salts and bile pigments in urine the next question will be obstruction in what answer will be obstruction in common bile duct or common hepatic duct right obstruction can be intrahepatic also but as a first year student common bile duct is the most important site of obstruction and the next question that will follow is what are the reasons why there is obstruction mainly obstruction can be due to number one a stone in common bile duct number two any worm okay worm infestation you know any worms in common bile duct worm in cbd or common hepatic duct and number three cancer or carcinoma of head of the pancreas you will be you will be reading in anatomy that uh, pancreas has got a head a neck and a tail so it is the head portion of the pancreas that comes in direct relation with the intramural part of uh, common bile duct so if there is an expansion in that area uh, by formation of any tumor or cancer then common bile duct will be compressed and that will lead to obstruction in bile flow that will lead to backflow of bile and that will hamper the enterohepatic circulation and that will lead to uh, excretion of bile salts and bile pigments in urine apart from that you also need to know the physiology of obstructive jaundice why actually bile salts and bile pigment comes out in urine in case of hemolytic jaundice why uh, there is no bile pigment in urine in case of hepatocellular jaundice so all three types of jaundice questions will be asked but you don't need to stress right now if you have not studied that yet if you have studied all the jaundice then it's fine you already know what i'm talking about but if you have not studied yet we'll be discussing all types of jaundice in detail and then we'll again refer to this class right so this is all that you need to know for bile salt and bile pigment qualitative tests remember the chart that i just showed you in case of uh, bile pigment you need to write the principle and procedure observation inference along with the alternative test and in case of bile salts you need to write the same thing the principal procedure observation inference and the alternative test in your practical notebook so 
uh, i hope now you find it much easier to practice all these tests hands on feel free to get back to me in the comment section if you are watching this video till now please type the code of the day that is obstructive right if you type obstructive in the comment section i will know you have watched this video thanks a lot for watching and i will see you soon with another video till then bye and take care